Yo, 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 what's good, Carmination? It's your boy Tristan, aka Sriracha DFS, back once again with another NBA video. Welcome to another episode of NBA DFS DraftKings Picks on Monday, November 22nd, 2021, powered by DraftKings and DFS Karma, where I do a breakdown of the games and give you guys the best plays from each team on the slate. So make sure to like the video, subscribe. Um, to the YouTube channels, if so you do not miss out on any of our free media content or our live streams, um, comment as well. Um, if you do like our content or have any feedback, questions, um, we try to get back to everyone as soon as possible. Um, and and I appreciate all the comments. Like I said last time, um, positive, negative, I, I take it all in and I try to do better each time out. So thank you so much uh, for watching it. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. We have a 10-game slate on a Monday. Um, a, a lot of games actually compared to the weekend. Um, I think we had like an eight and a four game slate yesterday. So um, 10 games, pretty decent size slate. Let's get to it. Brooklyn at Cleveland for the first game. Um, Brooklyn side, we have Kyrie Irving still out. Joe Harris out. Bruce Brown out. Nick Claxton out. So um, James Harden has taken on a bigger role in the scoring department when Joe Harris uh, has gotten it. Excuse me, sorry. Has gotten uh, hurt with that ankle injury. So, um, actually, let me make sure it's an ankle injury. Okay, ankle injury. Um, ever since he's been out with the ankle injury, James Harden has taken like a huge role in the scoring department. And then, uh, but Katie's coming back today. James Harden's price has gone extremely up. I probably wouldn't pay for him here, or KD. Um, KD, I think, is better in the spot in my opinion. But I still wouldn't pay that high for him there. And then with Bruce Brown being out, we could still see um, Patty Mills have that bump, um, even though he's priced up to the point where I think Joe Harris is out. Um, so that that uh, that's still a good price for him, 4.5K. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, Aldridge, my bad, uh, might be needed tomorrow just because um, I think Jared Allen is back. Yeah, <clears throat> Jared Allen is back. So they won't be able to run maybe play Griffin at center anymore um, against Jared Allen because I think he gets absolutely destroyed. Um, so we might see more LaMarcus Aldridge. And I don't think I'd look at anyone else on this slate or on this side, sorry. Cleveland side, we got Lamar Stevens doubtful, uh, Chetty Osmond doubtful, Evan Mobley out, and Colin Sexton out as well. Uh, so... That opens up Darius Garland, still 7.2K. Um, on, on the cheaper side, he should be about uh, 7.5, 7.6, I think. Um, he's been putting up mad numbers. Um, this matchup's going to be tough, though, because Brooklyn is, I think, top 10 in defense, um, especially as of late. So um, just keep that in mind when you are um, you know, building your lineups for the day. Uh, Ricky Rubio, 6.8K. I, I do like him a little bit. Um, his ceiling is high. Uh, I wouldn't say higher than Garland. I think they're about the same just because uh, Darius Garland has shown some flashes of, of that 40, 45 point upside, um, DK point upside um, before. And sorry, I, don't, I can't even click on that because the overlay is messed up like that. Um, I'm going to try to talk to Travis, get a better overlay so it's showing less of my face on the screen because like my face is like huge and putting more of the things that y'all want to see. So. I'll get to that for sure. Um, yeah, besides that, Jared Allen should see a bulk of the minutes at center. Um, Kevin Love's going to definitely get a bump. He's priced at 5.8, which is pretty fair for um, him right now. So moving on, Charlotte at Washington. Uh, Charlotte has P.J. Washington as doubtful. Doesn't really do much. Mason Plumlee will still see those minutes. But Washington likes to go small. So at one point, the uh, Charlotte Hornets could go small and match as well. Um, <clears throat> Lamelo's super priced up. Miles Bridges priced up. Gordon Hayward still a little bit cheap, um, but Washington is, I think, also top to any defense this year. So it's going to be a tougher matchup for the Hornets. Um, not sure. Oh, Kelly Oubre Jr. Uh, he's worth a look in GPPs. 4.4K upside of 30 minutes at night. So definitely someone to look at there in GPPs. On the Washington side, Rui Hachimura out. Thomas Bryant out. Um, not much to see here. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie and Kyle Kuzma are priced up to the point where they start to become a little bit, um, I guess, worrisome in playing them because 
their floors are a little bit cheaper than their their price right now um but this matchup is is primed just because charlotte plays at a high pace charlotte's not good on defense um and allows a lot of points so those two guys very good i like beal tonight uh, as a spend up that no one's probably going to play um but he's only if it fits in my opinion like a last man in sort of thing as a stud um so that's actually no denny of Deja cheap uh gpp play in my opinion um if he gets the minutes he can accumulate the defensive stats he can definitely reach his upside there in this matchup too houston at boston next game kevin porter jr questionable john wall still out so kpg i think has missed the last couple games um we'll see if he's ruled in for this one um, this matchup might be a little tough for Houston because Boston does get Jalen Brown and Robert Williams back. Um, and Jalen Brown has this weird thing. Uh, I'll, I'll say it on the next, uh, when I get to the Boston side, but um, he has this weird thing. Um, so here, if Kevin Porter Jr. is out, I do like Jashante at 5.2K, Eric Gordon at 5K, Jalen Green at 4.7. If you believe that this game stays close and that this game stays like competitive, then um, I think those three guys are going to be ones you're going to want for sure because Boston's pretty good defensively inside. Um, but Jay Shante, Eric Gordon, and Jalen Green should uh, carry the, the bulk of those points and, and stats that keep the game close. Um, on the Boston side, so here we go. Um, Jalen Brown's probable. Robert Williams is probable. They're pro Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are priced up hella. Uh, I probably wouldn't touch him here um, in, a, in a game where, of course, Jalen Brown is going to come back, which bumps Jason Tatum down, which bumps Al Horford, Dennis Schroeder, Marcus Smart. All those guys bump down, especially Robert Williams coming back. Al Horford gets a bigger bump down than, than what would happen if Jalen Brown wasn't here. So, um, But Jalen Brown has this weird thing where whenever he comes back from an injury or an illness or something like that, especially this year, he's gone nuts. Um I don't know the exact stats. I want to pull it up, but it would obviously show different on the screen. So if you want to go look it up, every single time he's come back from like a game absence, he's gone like 25 plus points, 30 points, something like that. Um, but yeah, probably wouldn't go anywhere there. OKC at Atlanta. Um, Shea Gilgis Alexander is questionable, which is the biggest news in this game. Um, if he sits, everyone here gets a bump. Josh Giddy probably handles the ball a ton. Lou Dort probably gets a ton of uh, defensive stats. Or not defensive stats, but like rebounding stats and assist stats now compared to his low uh, totals of what he's gotten the last couple of games. Um, someone else I'm looking at. Who would start? They might actually just shift got Josh Giddy to the point guard position and start um, Kendrick Williams or... One of these guys. That would be interesting. Um, but watch for this news for sure. This is going to be the big one you want to watch out for. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Alexander is going to be questionable. Um, on the Atlanta side, we have uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, questionable. DeAndre Hunter out and Onyeka Okongwu out as well. For this one, this is going to be the news we want to see. Because if Bogdanovich is ruled out, then Kevin Huerter, all the minutes. Cam Reddish might move into the starting lineup. Or... or What's his name? Solomon Hill. And, and the coach would just totally cuck us again. But um, doubt Danilo, sorry, Danilo Gallinari definitely gets a bump as well if Bogdan's ruled out. So those are the guys you want to watch if he is ruled out. Um, luckily, it's a 4.30 game or 7.30 game. My, my bad for you. the East Coasters. Um, Indiana at Ch Chicago is the next game. On the Indiana side, only TJ Warren's out. Um, Indiana has been playing weird as of late. The coach has been doing these weird ass rotations. Uh, it's it's tough to trust at the moment, but these guys are pretty cheap for their pre for like this this matchup as well as um, the minutes that they can possibly get. Um, I've I've seen Carlisle run him like 36, 38 minutes at po at points, but last couple games has been in the low thirties. Um, we just want to watch out for that and just be weary of that. Chicago side, um, Nicholas. Nikola, sorry, Vucevic is uh, questionable, but um, the blurb below states that he's probably going to be out. His conditioning is just not up to shape ever since he's been ruled out with COVID uh, protocols and all that stuff. So um, I'm, I'm going to assume that he's out. Patrick Williams is out as well. So 
Um, this team's on a back-to-back. Um, they could have tired legs. I think they played really well against... Let's see who they played against tonight. Uh, the Knicks. Yeah, they played really well against the Knicks tonight. A tough defensive team. They're going to be facing a, le a, a lesser defensive team, but a team with fresh legs. So, um, this is going to be a tough spot to go to. They're definitely worth the spend-up. Um, but if something whack happens in this game, I just wouldn't be surprised. But um, plays I'm looking at, probably DeMar DeRozan. Um, he should have he should have a pretty easy matchup. Um, not easy, but it's nothing to worry about. Um, Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso. Um, Alex Caruso at that price is still pretty nice. Orlando versus Milwaukee. Next game on the slate. Cole Anthony is questionable, which is the big news here. Michael Carter-Williams questionable. Gary Harris questionable. Uh, Jonathan Isaac's out. And then uh, Etuan Moore's out as well. So Cole Anthony is the big kicker here. Um, if he's out, then people like Jalen Suggs gets a bump. Uh, Mo Bamba gets a bump. RJ Hampton still gets a bump. Uh, Terrence Ross should still see a bump as well, even though he didn't play that well last game. And then Franz Wagner, who's been pretty consistent as of late until that last game against Milwaukee. But this game was oddly close because um, they, they just played each other, I believe, on Saturday or Friday, one of those days. And this game was oddly close, um, which meant that the Orlando side popped off too because Milwaukee is a terrible defensive team. Um, they're really good at the game of basketball, but they're terrible defensively. They give up a ton of points um, and they play fast. So um, again, if you do believe that this game stays close, you're going to want to stack some of these dudes on the Orlando side, like um, RJ Hampton, who went off last time. Jalen Suggs had a pretty good showing, even though he was 3.8 last time. He's 5K now, but... Um, that's just something, I guess, that I'm looking at if uh, this game were to stay close, like like how you play it. Um, but watch Cole Anthony news first. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest point in this game to, to worry about. Milwaukee side, Semi Ojale out. Brooke Lopez out. Dante DiVincenzo out. So again, if you do believe this game stays close, Giannis Antetokounmpo is probably going to be that guy. Um, he's had three crazy games in a row with over 62 plus DK points each. I just don't think that's going to keep up um, with Chris Middleton back, easing into things. Drew Holiday has been performing like poo-poo as of late. And then Bobby Portis had a, had like a nuts game last game. So um, I'm not sure if I'd go to him here at 12K. He's definitely worth the spend up if you think so. Um, I just think my cash could be used elsewhere on a 10-game slate. But yeah, uh, saying that makes me think he's going to be loaned. But um, he's definitely worth a look for sure. Next game, Minnesota at the Pelicans. I like this one quite a bit, um, except for the fact that Minnesota just blew the Grizzlies out by 40, and that makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. Anthony Edwards scored like 15, five threes. Five threes in the, in the first quarter, 15 points. And, yeah, they just rolled on from there. Naz Reed questionable. Josh Okoge questionable. Um, players I'm looking at, Anthony Edwards got his minutes... Or his price down. What? That's weird. Um, I like him in this matchup. 7.4K. Love that. Uh, Patrick Beverly, 5K. Love that. Um, let me think real quick. They start Josh Hart, Nikhil, Blake. Okay. So what I'm thinking is Jared Vanderbilt will be m matched up against either Josh Hart or Brandon Ingram because they play the 3-4 on that team. Um, so... I believe it's going to be Brandon Ingram because I think Ingram does play the four on that team. So that's something to note. I'm not sure if Vanderbilt's going to be used a lot if Akoji's ruled in. Um, and then we'll have J.D. McDaniels on. Yeah, it's going to be tough because McDaniels might play on um, Josh Hart or I mean Brandon Ingram because they're, they're lengthy in size like that. And then they'll put Vanderbilt on Josh Hart. But I don't know if he's going to be that versatile to guard him. We'll see. Vanderbilt's worth a look in GPPs because of his uh, point per minute production. So definitely look at that. Um, and besides that, I probably wouldn't go anywhere else. I think they did play each other a couple times this, this season already. Yeah, and Jonas went nuts. He's like my guy today. Um, Jonas, 8.9K. Um, price is pretty steep. His upside, ridiculous, especially last game. They just needed to stay close, and it would have been nuts. So I, I and today, tonight, they're home in the Smoothie King Center. You know how it is. Um, I like Jonas tomorrow. 
definitely 8.9k. I'm not sure if he's going to be too owned at that price, but either way, I'm playing him. Um, let me go through the injury news first before I get to that, though. Devontae Graham questionable, Zion Williamson out, Dalton Holmes out, and uh, D.D. Luzada is out as well. So um, if, if Devontae Graham's out, Brandon Ingram just picks up a lot of more of the ball handling. He had a terrible shooting night last night or last game out. Um, but this game should should definitely be better. Minnesota's um, middle of the pack in defense, and they play super fast. So um, I definitely like Brandon Ingram here. Uh, and Jonas Valanciunas, my guys right there. Phoenix at San Antonio. Next game on the slates. Um, Abdel Nader's out on the Phoenix side. Dario Sarge is out as well. And then Frank Kaminsky's out. Uh, they're on a back-to-back, -to -back too. And uh, Chris Paul's price, still nice at 8.4K. DeAndre Ayton, 7.1K. I like him there. I like Chris Paul here. Um, I think DeAndre Ayton matches well against probably Jacob Poitel, who they should be starting, I think, next game. Um, I definitely like Ayton there. And one of McCall Bridges or Jay Crowder. So tonight, I think Jay Crowder was the guy who did well. Or, or last night, sorry. Jay Crowder was the guy who did well, but I think McCall Bridges, this might be his time tonight. He's going to be guarding, I think, Kelvin Johnson, I believe, um, and it's not that hard of a matchup for him because Kelvin sometimes does some wacky stuff and uh, just doesn't look like a basketball player. So McCall Bridges, um, 5K, I think he gets it done tonight um, on the San Antonio side. Jo Jack Lawndale, Jock Lawndale, sorry, he's out, uh, or questionable. And then Zach Collins is out. Um, on this side, if Jacob Poto is going to play his full allotment of minutes, I think 6K for him is pretty nice. DeAndre Ayton is a very good defender, but um, Poito's ability to play all sides of, I guess, the offense, as in he can pass the ball, he can set screens to play the pick and roll, he can um, play down low, he gets puts back, put backs. So I, I do think 6.2. Or, sorry, 6K is pretty cheap for him. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. If he starts, I like it. If he doesn't start, definitely don't play him. Um, Derek White, 4.9K, super cheap. Jeez. Jeez. Um, he has upside for sure. It's just I don't even know what happened to him as of late. And I probably don't want to touch him here just because of my bad experience with him. But he's in a good spot just because of his price. Um, Phoenix is a tough defensive team, though. But if this game stays close, I do believe him and DeJunte Murray will be the big ones um, who, who keep this one close. So definitely watch out for that. But that price down, 4.9K. Um, Memphis at Utah, second to last game on the slate. On the Memphis side, Dylan Brooks doubtful, DeAnthony Melton out, and uh, Sam Merrill out as well. So that bumps up my guys, Desmond Bain and Kyle Anderson. Um, Kyle Anderson started last game. Memphis got wasted, wiped took out by 40 points by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Everyone on that team sucked besides Desmond Bain that day. I do think it's time for a redemption. I, the only problem is Utah's a good defensive team and a good team as well. But I don't know. I just feel like that game was just so whack. That Minnesota game where they lost by 40, so whack. Um, it's just a tough call here. I would... I would Look to them in GPPs. I do like Des Desmond Bay, my guy, and Kyle Anderson still. I might still just plug him tomorrow. Tyus Jones had a very good game in a, in a blowout game. So if you do think it's going to blow out, Tyus Jones, definitely worth your look there. Take a look at him. Um, but Desmond Bain, Kyle Anderson, mainly my guys tomorrow. And that John Morant call last week was hideous. My fault. On the Utah side, Donovan Mitchell. Um, 8.5k. Oh, they have no injuries. Sorry, let me state that first. No injuries here. Um, Rudy Gobert, 8.3k. Gonna be playing a lot of. Oh, you know what? Steven Adams, 4.3k. Oh yeah, they're gonna need a big body against Rudy Gobert. I forgot which homie it was in the court, but I think this is Steven Adams night round two. Steven Adams night round two. Think about that. Um, Rudy Gay has been playing great as of late. Look at him. He just came back. He's starting to play good basketball. He fits in with his team a lot. But the only thing is it takes away second unit usage from Jordan Clarkson. Um, Hassan Whiteside, Joe Ingles. Um, he gets an assist bump just because Rudy Gay's on the team um, and, and can make those shots. But, I mean, I would say that Rudy Gay takes a little bit of usage away from everyone. So, 
definitely think about that. Last game, Philly at Sacramento. This is nice because Luke Wong got fired. Um, Danny Green's questionable. Joel Embiid is out. Ben Simmons is out still. Um, I like this matchup a lot for the uh, 76ers. I do think they, they beat the Sacramento Kings tonight. Unless Sacramento somehow has this weird fire in them because their coach got fired. They're going to play a lot better. Um, I mean, a lot of people did hate Luke Walton. I am not a Luke Walton um, fan at all. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just started sucking. <laughs> but um, people I'm looking at, Tobias Harris, 8.1K. Um, Andre Drummond, fade at all costs. And watch, watch, watch me say that. And he's going to go nuts tonight for just some weird reason. But fade him. I hate him. I, I hate him, man. Um, Seth Curry, 4.9K. I like that price. Georges Niang, if he starts again, 4.2K. I love that price. I think Matisse Thibault came back last game, limited minutes. Um, so try to watch for news to see if he gets a minute bump up. On the Sacramento side to end the slate. Um, we got no injuries here. Um, we do have Harrison Barnes at 6.3K, really cheap price. I wonder if they're still going to start Metu. We're going to have to see what the starting lineups are going to be. It's the last game on the slate. Ah, oh, damn, that sucks. Um, we'll see if Metu still starts because I knew <laughs> no Luke Walton was like, we're going we're to keep experimenting for five games ever since Metu starts. Um, we're going to experiment for five games and see if, uh, give Metu the time, time to play. So we'll see if he still starts after the coach got fired or if Bagley just randomly starts because um, we don't know. We don't know how... Uh, well, what we know is that Luke Wallen didn't like Marvin Bagley. But is the coach that steps in for Luke Wallen, is he going to like Marvin Bagley? That's something we'll find out tomorrow, folks. That wraps up this slate. This NBA DFS DraftKings picks video for Monday, November 22nd. Again, if you like the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the DFS Karma YouTube channel for more daily media content and our live streams. Um, this was a long one. If you stuck around, I appreciate you very much. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. Have yourselves a good day. Good luck in your contest tomorrow. It's your boy Tristan, a.k.a. Sriracha DFS, signing off.